Good morning, everyone. I wanted to take a couple minutes to talk about the latest thing from Google Classroom, and that is the native app for Android and iOS devices. I happen to have one of each, so I just wanted to take a few minutes to walk through some of the features that I'm seeing on the app. As always, everything we see from Google, especially with Classroom, has been updated a lot so um, and frequently. So if you don't see a feature now, it doesn't mean that it won't be there later. It just means that right now in its first rendition, which as far as I can tell, it was just released yesterday. It's not a feature that we have in, in the app at this point. So on, um, on, the iOS, on the Android device, which I have on a cell phone, um, it's really easy to see all my classes. Now these are a mixed bag of classes that I am either a student in or I actually am the teacher in. Um, so that makes it really easy to see all my classes all in one shot. The one thing that I don't see yet on, um, on the app is the ability to actually create assignments. So I see it as a good way to keep track of what's going on. You can see all of your assignments that you've created on your desktop, but you don't see any, you don't see the ability to actually make a new assignment. If you click on the plus symbol in the bottom right hand corner, then you can create an announcement, but it's not actually going to create an assignment for you, won't let you navigate into your drive at all, etc. Um, as a student, or um, yes, as a student, I would be able to access a class and then um, reply back to a message and use other tools that I've, or other documents or file types that I've created in um, on the device that I'm using. So for example, I could add, if I click on add content, uh, that's adding in a comment. So I could click on, yeah. So when I'm looking at an assignment, I can click on your work for the tab up at the top. And then it gives me the ability to add in attachments. So that's nice if you're working um, in an iPad classroom, in an iOS classroom, or if you have students who are using their own mobile devices, they'd be able to use the app to add in things like sound files that they've recorded on their cell phone or their or their iPad. Um, maybe they'd be adding in a photo that they've taken really easily. You know, the, the possibilities are sort of a little bit more endless at that point. It's not something that's restricted to just what's on their computer. Yes, you can get what's on your cell phone on your computer, but let's face it, if we can get rid of the middleman and go straight to Google Classroom, then that's great. Uh, another one of the features that I've seen for Google Classroom on the mobile device um, or the iOS device is the ability to actually have this as an offline content. Um, so if you have a student who can't access the internet at home, doesn't have very good internet or whatever, they'd be able to use like their iPod Touch, for example, pull in Google Classroom, sync it while they're in, while they're in school, go home, use it at home, and then come back and sync it with the network. So that's super handy for a district like ours and in, in relatively rural Maine, not, not super rural, um, but we do have kids that don't have internet, so that's a really nice feature as well. I'm just going to switch over real quick to the iOS device just to show you what it would look like on the iPad. Um, and the general gist is basically the same. We have the same sort of interface that we're used to on our computer. Uh, so we can switch onto the home screen. For some reason, I keep on getting loading errors on, on the iOS device. I did not get any load errors on the Android device, so um, I'm actually not pumping through all my data on this. Um, oh, my students actually just started showing up, so maybe things are starting to fix, fix themselves, but the same general just happens here. So we can find a class, we can click on it, we can click the plus symbol in the bottom right-hand corner to add in an announcement, or we can click on an assignment and then um, modify it, add in comments, um, or let's see if we click that, or we can delete it. So it looks like we can comment on an assignment or we can delete it, but we can't really do much else beyond that with a, with a specific assignment. Uh, it is handy if you're looking for, if I go back to one of the other classes that I actually have students in, it does supposedly let you see right on your mobile device, how many kids, yep, how many kids have done it, how many kids haven't done it. Um, so in terms of classroom management, that can be a nicer way of looking at things. Again, it does sync with uh, the internet when you do have the connection and then breaks the connection, but doesn't, it lets you use the app 
outside of the wireless network, which can be really handy to for your classroom management. Um, let's see what else. So overall, I think it's, I'll be honest, um, I think it's a little lackluster at this point from a teacher aspect, but if you have students in your class who are in your classroom and you're using Google Classroom, then I really think that I would look into using the app more. Um, I just navigate onto the assignment screen, which is of course taking a little bit of time to load, but the assignment screen for students, it actually gives them a to-do list. So this long to-do list of all their assignments in their classroom classes, all of them, color-coded by what, what the assignment is or what class it's in, what the due date is, what class, what section, all that sort of fun stuff, gives it to them right here. So it makes it really easy to see what they have going on. So if they're, um, for example, an iPhone user, then the iOS device could be handy for them. They can also navigate onto the done page and see what work they have done uh, and see what their grades are for it and stuff like that. Um, as I was saying, I think overall, it's a good start. I'm not seeing a lot of applicability or a lot of usefulness so much for teachers at this point, but the ability to sync the app and then use the app without internet access, I think is really gonna be handy for a lot of our kiddos that don't have internet at home. Um, from a teacher aspect, not being able to create assignments on it, and I'm, I'm thinking that you can probably do grading on it, but Given that you can't create assignments, I'm not going to really throw that out there as, as a real big hit at this point. Um, for me, I'd, I'd want to be able to create assignments first before I'd worry about actually grading them on this. So initially, um, I give it a pretty warm response, but obviously there's a lot of growth involved in this app, and hopefully Google will update us with some more features as the time goes along and as more people use the app. So as I see more features come in, I'll do an update, but for now, Check it out for your students, suggest it to them if you're a Google Classroom, and let me know what you think.